Hello there and welcome back to a brand new edition of Ariel Hawani Meets. And if I'm being honest, uh, this is one that I've wanted to do for quite some time. I am so thrilled that we are finally doing it. The one and only Kevin Owens, my old friend Kevin Owens here. Thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. I tried to dodge you a few times. but No, yeah, I know. We finally there. pinned yeah. you down. By the yeah. way, are those uh, Montreal Canadiens colors? Is that why you're... Uh, you know, it's a Mean Gene Okerlund shirt sure. from Homage, which the WWE has a partnership with, and it's pretty much all I wear. So, yes, yeah, I've seen you sure wear this shirt It goes with the Habs before. colors, that works. Yeah. I thought you were doing that as like, you know, a bit of a olive branch. I'm sorry to Montreal say that. Connection. Sorry to say that. I just grabbed my Mean Gene shirt that I always grab. That's fine. I was uh, looking yeah. a little bit too into it. Um, yeah. This uh, this has been a great year for you. Um, I saw an interview that you did at the very end of last year. Uh, and you were talking about the previous year, which was an, a great year for you as well, and you signed the new contract, and you said one of the things that you really want to focus on from here on out is, you know, belts are great, main events are great, but like just enjoying the ride and sitting back and kind of smelling the flowers because maybe earlier in your career you weren't doing that. Yeah. Do you feel like you are doing that now? Um, I think so. I don't really worry about what's next anymore, which is always literally was on my mind constantly. And uh, I don't really do that anymore because I thought last year when I wrestled Steve in the main event at WrestleMania, I, and I said this in a positive way, but it doesn't sound great, but I thought it's all downhill from here, you know. And then it wasn't because a year later I was winning the tag titles with Sammy in the main event at WrestleMania. So, uh, you know, I think the last two years have just been so incredible, but I've learned to kind of just, I used to always worry, when I was Universal Champion, for example, I used to worry what's going to happen next week, what's going to happen next month. So every night I'd be worried about what's the next thing instead of worrying about what I was doing and trying to enjoy it. I got to team with Chris Jericho for a long time, and uh, I'm ashamed to say that I didn't enjoy that as much as I should have. Looking back at it now, I'll see clips online. Chris and I will text about him you know, reminisce of stuff we did together. And I'm like, that was a great time. But in that moment, I can tell you, I was not feeling that at all because I was always worried about what's next. Are we going to make this better? How are we gonna... So now I don't do that anymore. Um, I really do just try to focus on what I'm doing, you know, from day to day. You can, you can ask me what I want to do next week right now and I, I won't have an answer for you because I haven't thought about it. Uh, it's just a different approach. And in a way, it might be uh, counterproductive because... You know, you want to always have a drive to go forward and get bigger and get better. But uh, I don't know. I think that that was for for me. That that's in the past now. I just want to have a good time and enjoy the moments that I get to live. In the last two years, the last two WrestleManias were moments I tried to you know soak in as much as I could. And uh, I think that also helps me enjoy just what I do a lot more. What was know? the turning point for you, like where you realized I need to start? enjoying this and, and how, like it's easy to say it here yeah. but it's harder to actually well, put into practice right since 2018 in 2018 i thought it was a really low point for me in wwe because i remember i wasn't doing stuff that i thought was as uh important as it could have been i thought i wasn't being showcased the way i should be which is something that everybody at one point in their career is going to go through and feel right and I remember, uh, so like coming off 2017, I was Universal t Champion, then I lost the title, and then I thought, I felt like I, I went into the Shane McMahon uh, feud, which I thought was really good. And then coming out of WrestleMania that year is when I felt like everything started kind of dipped down. And then I was feuding with Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley, and no, nothing against those guys, but literally I was just a, a, a crash test dummy for those guys, which I did very well because I gave everything I had into it. But it also took a toll on my body a lot. And uh, at the end of 2018, I was like, I, I think I need some time because I, I wasn't enjoying any of it. And uh, I remember, like, it was weird. Like, I was reaching out to people to try to, like, have them tell me how to fix it. Like, I randomly called Shawn Michaels one day on the drive to tell him, like, I'm not, I don't know what's going on. My mind's not, and he was just kind of trying to tell him, well, look, man, you know, just giving me the best advice he could. But basically, it all came about, it was always, so you have to live in the moment, blah, blah, blah. And when I it seemed like I couldn't do that, pretty much everybody seemed to be thinking like maybe some time off would be good. And eventually, I guess the turning point was I had to talk with Vince himself, and he kind of gave me the same thing where it's like, you're, you're just too worried about everything that's next. You're too worried about, you know, basically what I was just saying. You're too worried about what's next. You're not worried about what's in the moment. And then um, that coupled with just the, the, the last few months of, of, of not being... Uh, you know, fulfilled at work or whatever, or, or not being happy with what I was doing or, or, or whatever it might be, and my body breaking down, to be honest, 
Uh, I ended up uh, getting MRIs on my knees. Turns out I needed surgeries on both. And that coincided with it was time to go. So I, I, we agreed that let's just go get these surgeries now and probably be good for my head as well. And then I went out for five months. And those five months were pretty amazing. Uh, I never thought I'd enjoy being away from work as much as I did that during those five months. And I think during that time away is when I was able to grasp more of a healthier perspective on what I do. But then I say that I came right back into what I thought was going to be a huge WrestleMania for me. And I ended up not even being on WrestleMania. So right away I was like back to frustration and, and being upset a little. But I, I just approached it differently. The time off did me some good. And then obviously everything that happened in the pandemic, things changed for everyone during the pandemic, you know? And um, as awful as the pandemic was, obviously for many, many reasons for everyone in the world, for me, there was a huge silver lining because I got to be a WWE superstar. I got to make do this for a living every single day uh, while still waking up in my own bed in the morning, going to sleep in my own bed at night for a year and a half. You know, I lived in Orlando, so we'd either be taping shows in Orlando or in Tampa. At worst, I'd be gone for 12 hours for a day at work. And that would, like, in, in no other circumstances will we ever be able to imagine that that would be something that was possible, you know? So I got to live my dream, still have the career I always wanted to have, and still be home with my kids and my wife every single day for a year and a half. So when we came back from that and got back on the road and started traveling again, it's a lot easier to appreciate everything, even the traveling. Traveling can be kind of rough. It's just part of what we do, right? But even that was something that, oh man, I, I forgot. It's kind of fun to travel, to mm -hmm. go places. And then obviously performing in front of fans, performing in front of crowds again. So everything kind of snowballed into what I am now, which is just all I really worry about is, is tonight going to be fun? I'm sure it will. I want to make sure I enjoy it. Tomorrow, I'm not on the show. Normally, it would drive me crazy. I don't care. I'm going to be at the show. I'm going to watch everybody else perform. I'm going to have a blast doing it. And then I'll be on a show next time. You know what I mean? So it's a very different approach that I used to have. Uh, it's funny you say that. And also, by the way, uh, you mentioned calling Shawn Michaels. I was just going to say, uh, did you lose your smile? And, hmm. and you called the guy who yeah. famously lost his smile. Right. So perhaps he was a, a good person to speak to. Um, what you just said there reminded me of something. And I hope you don't mind me bringing this up. But uh, I had the privilege of being at Elimination Chamber mm -hmm. in Montreal. And uh, I had the privilege of seeing you throughout the weekend, right? Yeah. I didn't say this to you. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable saying this to you, but I was almost to a degree like feeling bad for you. Mm -hmm. I couldn't help but wonder if you wanted to be a bigger oh, of part course. of that show. So, yeah. But then you just said like the old you would care, but I now mean, the new you. So I, I will you admit that one hurt for sure. It's a sold out pay per view in my hometown. And up until that point, I was just constantly asked. WWE like officials like higher ups like why are we doing pay per views in Montreal why are we doing and then we got one and I wasn't even on it so of course that sucked but you know did that kill you inside it didn't it it would have in the past yeah but now it didn't I was just like well this sucks annoyed can we do? yeah I mean yeah. at most but yeah. then also it's hard to be annoyed because on the other side of it it was a huge night for Sammy and he deserved every sure. bit of it so. I was very happy to see that happen. And like, happy is not even the word, right? This is a guy, uh, you know, I've talked about this in interviews before, but he, I came in with John Cena right from the get go, got, you know, pretty great spots from the start. Sammy came in a bit differently and for a few years was scratching and clawing just to get on the shows. Uh, and it was a head scratcher for me because I knew how good the guy was. And now everybody knows. And it took a little while to get there. But, uh, you know, obviously to see him get that kind of spotlight in Montreal was very well deserved. So it's hard for me to be like, you know, that probably helped uh, heal the wound a little to not be on it, knowing that it was his big night and it was a huge moment for him. Uh, and watching it happen, hearing the crowd form, that was just incredible. Uh, but of course I would have liked to be on it, you know. And I don't know when the next time I have a pay-per-view in Montreal. Might not never happen. I have, you know, I don't know how much longer I'll be doing this. Probably, I don't know. There's a good chance I will never go back to have a pay-per-view before I'm done. I don't know. So that sucked for sure. But like I said, that's a different approach too. It, uh, normally it would have driven me absolutely crazy. Like when I was on WrestleMania 35, man, a few weeks before, I, like I did not understand why. I understood plans had changed. I was completely fine with it. But I kept trying to, like, why? okay, but what else am I going to do? I can do something else on the show. And they're like, nah, just doesn't fit there, doesn't fit there, doesn't make sense. And it was driving me insane. I remember having a talk with Paul Heyman at a show. I think it was Raw. 
might have been a SmackDown, whatever. And I, I'm near a gorilla, and I was losing my mind. I'm like, Paul, I can't believe I'm not on WrestleMania. He's like, I can't believe it either. I'm like, what, what do I do? What do I do? He's like, I just walk in there and threaten to quit. I'm like, no, that's not how I'm going to handle this. But like, he's like, yeah, but if you, that's how you feel. And but, like, it was driving me crazy. And then I couldn't go to WrestleMania 35. I flew to New York. I had some appearances. And the day of the show, I'm like, I'm not going to this building. And I flew back home wow. just to go watch it with my wife and my kids because I didn't want to be anywhere near it. And then I flew back down the next morning for more appearances. But Montreal was different. Yeah, I just approached it like, okay, well, tonight sucks. I won't not on it, but I'm going to enjoy what it is. And then I watched the show. It was a great show. My hometown crowd made me proud. And this is true of everywhere in Canada, really. We go somewhere. And uh, it's funny because, like, our, you know, my, my fellow competitors, wrestlers, my, my colleagues come back and tell us. And I guess because, you know, me and Sam, you're Canadian, so automatically, wherever we are in Canada, might as well be our hometown. But it's become true. People are like, These, this crowd's amazing. Yeah. So, like, that's like a badge of honor for us, too. So I just uh, I just approached different, everything differently. Otherwise, normally, it probably would have driven me crazy, but this time I just kind of, uh, maybe next time. Uh, back to Montreal now. I maintain till this day, and I will maintain this forever, that it was a mistake not to make Sammy champion that night. Uh, I'm wondering if you talked to him about enjoying the moment and smelling the flowers, because I did speak to him about that very topic that weekend, and it seemed like he was having a hard time doing yep. that, that he was super stressed, that there was a lot going on. I think part of him knew what was coming and was a little disappointed about that as well. But did you ever stop him that weekend in Montreal and say, like, man, you've got to enjoy this. Like, this is what we've been dreaming about, and maybe you're not doing that enough? No, I didn't do that. I wouldn't say I did, that, I did it that weekend because um, I could really understood uh, whatever frustration there might have been there. I think we had to talk like that a few weeks before WrestleMania, though, because he was still hung up on what could have been, what should have been, whatever it might be, right? Not hung up on it, but, you know. Harping? Not even harping. It's just hard to, it's hard to, man, I can't even imagine what he was going through because I have been at times in WWE pretty popular. Mm. And there are times where I felt like, oh, I could be the guy if they just give me a little nudge. But never like him. Never did the audience get behind me because they saw how talented I was. And it wasn't because, uh, you know, I was told to do certain things a certain way or I, the, the machine, like, the machine didn't get behind him. They put him in a good spot for sure. But then his performances, his, uh, his uh, chemistry with the guys involved and obviously the willingness of those guys to help him move forward, all that lit up. The crowd behind, got the crowd behind him. Like it, it created this movement, and I've never experienced that, and very few people have. So to know that every single person in every single town we go to, at at some point before WrestleMania, every single like they were just like not they were there for the whole show, obviously, but Sammy was their guy, everywhere. So to know that, and to know that you're pretty much the guy, but you can't be the guy, must be so. God forget what I felt before. Right. It must be so frustrating. And I can't pretend to ever have felt that because the crowd never got behind me that way. So uh, it's for sure hard to let go or whatever. And like I said, he wasn't harping on it. He was, I just felt like at one point we had to have a talk and go, look, man, this tag team stuff, the WrestleMania thing, the Uso, this is huge. And he, all it took was for me to say that and go, for him to go, yeah, you're right. You're right. And then just kind of like Montreal was done. Now it's, you know, L.A. is a huge city for us as well. It's going to be a huge moment, and we just kind of refocus. That's all. But, uh, man, uh, it's got to be, a, you know, it's got to be so, some, it's just got to be very frustrating to be in that spot for sure and just not, just, you know, because obviously everybody in that spot would think, just just give me a shot. Right. Just, let, let, just let's go. And they just won't. I mean, the last two WrestleManias for you are all-timers, right? But at the end of the day, the Stone Cold one gets the nod a little yeah. bit over this past one, which surprised me to a degree, but obviously, I mean, it's Well, it's I meant Stone it Cold. in the scope of just how, how unlikely it, it was. Right. Me and Sammy winning the titles, the tag team titles together in WWE was always something people kind of assumed would happen. Winning in the main event of WrestleMania, as unlikely as it may seem, is still seems more possible than, hey, Stone Cold's going to come back after 19 years and wrestle you in the main event of WrestleMania. Right. What? You know what I mean? In that, in those terms... It edges out the other one. But, like, as far as special moments and enjoying the night, they're, like, neck and neck. There's no, you know what I mean? I can't pick one. 
can't pick one over the other. I just feel like one of them was almost unimaginable. And the other one, as unlikely as it was, was still something that was in the realm of possibility. You know what I mean? That's all. That's all I meant. Um, and, and with the Stone Cold one, I always wondered, why did they never promote the fact that you guys were going to wrestle? Because I feel like it could have even been bigger yeah, had they done I, uh, I'm not sure. I've, I've, even going into it, I'm not quite sure until... Um, until that night or that day, I wasn't sure we were going to have a match. Really? Yeah. So, And it's weird because I'd spoken to Vince McMahon about it. I'd spoken to Steve about it. And it was always this weird, uh, you know, you and, Sto- you and Stone Cold are going to do something at WrestleMania. Okay? Called him. He's super into it. He's really excited. But it's like yeah you know whatever it is what if it's a you know a fight or a match or whatever like you know we'll we'll figure all that out I'm like all right and then i'm sitting going into wrestling like when are we going to figure it out and it's just the day that day it was figured out they literally the feeling i had and i don't know if they had talked about it before or what but at one point i was in the room with both steve and vince and it just felt like both were just like what do you want to do what do you want to do and then they were just kind of throwing ideas and then it just became what it became I don't know why it was like that. It seemed like maybe it was a way to not put too much pressure on Steve, and maybe it was his own, his own like, maybe he asked for it to be. I, I have no idea. I, it was just a very funny position to be in. Yeah. Because in a way, I had no idea what it was. Like, even my dad would ask, you guys going to have a match? I'm like, I don't know. I wish I could tell you. I have no idea. Uh, but it turned out to be, uh, you know, pretty perfect, I think. And uh, regardless of whether it was promoted as a match before or not, yeah. I think we made, like, one thing we really did want to do is make sure people understood that it's not just going to be talking, 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 kick stunner, it's it. And I don't know if we may manage to convince people of that. Uh, if, either way, you know, I think it worked. Uh, I know you've obviously done a lot up until that point, but uh, in that moment, do you ever, like, do you ever sit back, like, you're in a room with Vince McMahon and Stone Cold, mm-hmm. and they're deciding whether, and are you like, how the hell did I end up here? Do you ever have that? Yeah, like, that happens. It's surreal, right? Yeah, that happens to me all the time, though. Um, you know, I remember for the first few years, or first few months anyway at least, I, would, I was wrestling John Cena every night, you know, in whatever house shows we were doing, whatever little towns or whatever big cities. You know, could have been L.A. one night and then, you know, somewhere in Virginia the second right. night. I would walk into my, uh, you know, hotel at like 3 a.m., whatever it was, after the drive, and, you know, most elevators have mirrors. And I remember this, doing this for pretty much every week. I'd walk in the elevator and as I was going up to my room, I'd just stand really close to the mirror and looking at myself like, how is this life? You know, how is this life? And it was. Because to me at heart, and you know, it's funny because some people might hold that against me as a, as a negative. Uh, you know, the, the, the purists of the business and how everybody needs to be larger in life and all that. Um, I'm just a fan, man. I really am. I'm a giant wrestling fan who decided I was going to wrestle. My parents, I was lucky enough to have parents that, uh, you know, cultivated my interest and pushed me towards it and drove me to wrestling school and and when it was time to start traveling they were behind me for that too and I just started traveling and I kept you know as I was traveling the world doing the you know independent shows I was watching WWE on my iPad and or my phone or trying to keep up with the shows every Monday every Friday every Tuesday whatever it was every pay-per-view I just I've just always been a giant fan and somehow I ended up being able to do this for a living too so like I'll have these moments all the time how close were you to leaving around a year and a half or so ago? Um, I can't say I was close, but I don't think I, I wasn't close either. I was really open to anything just because I didn't know, I didn't know how, like I, I didn't know anything. I had no idea how badly they wanted me to stay here. I had no idea what was possible elsewhere. I had no clue. And honestly, none of the talks really went very far because once it was time to talk to Vince, he made it clear he wanted me to stay. And um, you know, I felt like I wasn't done here, not even career-wise, but there's also a whole side to this place that people don't see, that people don't know, where um, we have a really incredible crew. And I'm talking not the wrestlers, obviously everybody, you know, everybody I wrestle with, everybody, like, I, I have a lot of very close friends, but like the crew, that the production crew, the people that the behind the scenes, there's really amazing people here. And uh, I, at the time, I remember I can't imagine leaving and not seeing these people every week because the other wrestlers i can you know probably run down you know you know run into down the road or whatever like just through the independence the last 20 years there's guys i haven't seen in 10 years but i'm still friends with them somehow just through the bond of wrestling right but 
for crew people, like it's different. I probably wouldn't ever get back in touch with, you know, one of our sound guys or anything like just because it's different. Like it's a different relationship. You just I see I just see them at work. But even though I just see them at work, I know them personally. I care about them, and we have a, a relationship. But like I couldn't imagine. It's weird. I couldn't imagine leaving these people behind and not never seeing them again. So part of me always felt like I, w- I don't I, I don't think I can leave, but I could if. You know, it's better for me, for my family, whatever it is. Uh, but it became pretty clear pretty quick that that wasn't going to be the case. And, you know, I was happy to stay. I was, I'm was i happy to be here. And uh, I still get to see all those people every week, which is probably the best part. I mean, I mean it. I go to the shows, and the people behind the scenes make this place very special. And it's a shame because they'll never get their flowers. Right. You know what I mean? But uh, I try to give it to them as much as I can because uh, we have a very special crew, very special team. And uh, look what has happened as a result of you staying, right? The Stone Cold, yeah. uh, the, the tag team win. Uh, Royal Rumble this year was incredible. Where would you rank this particular run, all the stuff that you and Sammy have been doing with the Bloodline? People keep saying online, this is a movie, this is one of the greatest angles in the history of the business, which is a crazy statement, but is feeling more and more true every week because there's so many twists and turns. For you personally, for your career, where does this stretch rank? Um, well, I feel... If you're asking me as far as my involvement in that angle, I don't feel uh, I don't feel responsible for any of it. You were a part of it, but it was a tiny little part, and it was literally again. I said this before. Look, here's one thing about this industry that I think is going uh, it, 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 it's being is being lost, and I really hate it. I think humility mm. is going out the window, and I don't know what it is. If it's the the, the I don't know if it's like the new like the new way of life with I, I know it sounds so ridiculous to say it sounds like I'm you know 60 years old right now right. Uh, complaining about kids nowadays but like I don't know if it's like the TikTok and YouTube stuff and I don't know like but all I see is constantly people like putting themselves over mm-hmm. and uh, social media on social media all this stuff and like then I see the same people in the locker room and I'm like oh that's not just a character they're playing that mm-hmm. seems like they're out, they really think this shit. it's crazy uh, you know, and being humble in this industry, I think, is a huge, it's a big key to, to just, I don't know, it's not, not key to success, but it's just an important quality to have. And I feel like that's gone, that's gone, right? For me, I always did everything I could, and I've seen it happen, right? I remember thinking, I, I, I would hear this, this thing, you know, like uh, people would say, like, oh, he, it, success went to his head. Hmm. And I'd be like, that's not a real thing. That's something that happens in movies and TV shows. But I've seen it happen here. I've seen it. I've, I, I, I was friends with people in NXT, and when we got called up, they went insane. And I'm like, what is these? Like, what happened? So to me, I've always tried to do everything I could to keep a level head. And uh, with because of that, I always try to look at things very, I don't know, as realistically as I can. And I said, right place, right time in my career a lot. And that's the truth. I was good enough to get to those places, but, you know... When I worked with Cena back in 2015, it's because he needed somebody new. And he, he, he just he felt like the roster was pretty much, he had done everything he could. And then he looked at NXT and who was the top guy in NXT? It was me. So he's like, that's the guy. Right place, right time. Uh, Universal title, Finn Balor got hurt. We got to put the title on somebody else. Can't really put it on Roman yet. Seth's had it a while. Big cast isn't ready. Right place, right time. And then same thing, you know, it just happened over and over again. You know, it, it's great because I, I, I can give myself enough credit for being at that place when it was time to pick somebody and I was there, right place, right time. I, I got there myself. But I don't want to ever lose sight of, of the reality of like this bloodline angle was amazing. But I was so such a small part of it because I just happened to have a 20-year story with Sammy already. But Sammy and the Usos made that story. I would just come in and out here and there and just, oh, I was just always the obvious choice to finish up that part of the story. You know what I mean? I think you're selling yourself short. I don't I think I am. That. Without you, you don't get that bridge. Like you were Yeah, but that's literally just because of 20 years of career. I mean, if, if he had that, that kind of story with somebody else, could have been you know, any, like he comes anyway. Together. You know what I mean? It's not just 20 years, but I, I appreciate the point I'm making is, from, yeah. yeah, if we're talking about the story, I, I played a very small part of it. As amazing as it was, I, the credit goes to those guys. Fair. And, uh, you know, there was a talk at one point before WrestleMania, who's going to be main event? Is it going to be Charlotte and Rhea or is it going to be the tag team title match? I obviously wanted it to be us because I felt like our story deserved it 100%. As far as the matches go, of course their match could have been main event. No, no, no problem. Story-wise, 
to me, there was no doubt it should have been us. But also, I really wanted to be main event. Not for me. I really wanted to be main because I got to do it with Steve. Right. But I, Sammy and the Usos deserve that. And I'm, anyway, I'm so glad it worked out because they deserved it uh, more than anybody. The, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, no problem. But anyway, and then if, you, if you're asking me as far as the run for the last few years, uh, just in terms of the run itself, obviously, if I'm a fan watching myself from the outside in and I'm, like, I'm not me, I'm just a fan watching Kevin Owens the last couple of years, how can you, like, I don't, I don't think anybody can, can, I don't know, like, you know, say for Roman maybe and what he's been doing for the last, uh, you know, two years with the title and everything, and I guess Cody as well, Cody came back, he got hurt, but he, you know, I, I think I've had the best run out of anybody. Hmm. And uh, I, again, I feel very lucky to just be there, just gone to do it, and I'm just so grateful for it all. The pop was incredible. That night was amazing in, uh, in Los Angeles. And we briefly got to speak to you afterwards, but I'm just wondering, like, when you left, when the cameras were gone, what was that like between you and Sammy and your families for every, you know, everything you guys have been through to have that moment together? Yeah, it was a whirlwind. Obviously, we had to leave. Uh, what I mean, that night we got to enjoy it a little bit, right? But um, the next day, finished WrestleMania, got on the jet to go do the Today Show, all that stuff. So we didn't get to see our families as much as we wish we would have. But just, if anything, just knowing they're in the front row for it, being able to go straight to them after, and then uh, just, you know, getting to share these moments with them. It will never get old, but it's also the twenty-year journey that they saw all of us on. Like you know, Sammy's wife obviously wasn't has didn't know us for twenty years. They met a bit later, but she's seen the last seven, eight years or whatever. My wife since twenty two thousand six, seen everything, has known Sammy for a long time, and my dad and my mom have been there from the start. You know, my dad was in the little buildings in Montreal watching me and Sam wrestle in front of 40 people you know and when we leave the ring after our match he'd be right by the right by the curtain to tell us like great stuff great stuff and he'd tell us like they don't they're not any better than you in WWE you guys are just as good as them you know so to get to share that with them and, and know what it meant to them too is just uh it's really hard to put into words as corny as it sounds it's just extremely special there's really no word for it uh, the tag titles will always be very important Two people like me of my generation, my favorite wrestler, Bret Hart, mm -hmm. uh, two Canadian guys put those belts on the map. Yeah. Here you are, two Canadian guys doing that. Did you feel any sort of like, wow, this, these were these were the belts that the Hart Foundation held? Like, did, th did that mean anything to you? Did those guys have that impact on you as well? So for sure, you know, uh, anything we do, we kind of put in perspective of uh, people that have done it before us, right? And just whether it's Bret Hart or anyone like that, right? But uh, for me, I mean, the most important part of this run, and I hate to say, I don't know if we've lived up to it just yet, and I don't think that's our fault. I think it's just circumstantial and the way the chips fall sometimes. The Usos were an unbelievable, like, man, they're just incredible. They really are. And uh, they brought those titles to, uh, like, and before them, like, the New Day worked so hard to make the titles count. And then the Usos did what they could to make these titles as big as they could. They made the main event WrestleMania. I wanted to follow up on that and keep that going. And I'm, uh, I'm honest enough to say we're not even on Money in the Bank. So I don't know if we're doing it right. And I, certainly not for lack of effort and certainly not for the lack of us giving it, giving it everything we have. But I don't know right now if the tag titles are as important as they were a few months ago. And that really bothers me. Hopefully we get to, you know, fix that. But uh, that was something I did worry about. Is that once we win these titles, I want to do right by them for everything that the Usos did for them. Um, so, yeah, there's a sense of that is it, looking at the past and what people have accomplished with those things and wanting to make them, you know. Like I remember when I won the Intercontinental title, Owen Hart, like, it was the same title design that Owen had. Obviously my, my uh, you know, uh, I love Owen Hart, everybody knows that, so that was like a really important thing for me. I want to be a good intercontinental champion because they, there's, and it's not just Owen Hart, you know, Razor Ramon, all those guys that they are synonymous with the, the title. You want to do them proud, it's a weird thing, but it's definitely something that's in our mind, yeah. Just curious, you mentioned, all right, so uh, Stone Cold, then you main event with, you know, your best friend. Do you have any sort of, like, you, if, if it was up to you, if they came to you, WrestleMania 40, how do you, you know, how do you top it each year? What would be your perfect scenario? Mm, that's a hard one. So part of me uh, goes to what would be the best 
story or whatever. And then another part of me goes, what would you enjoy doing the most? As far as enjoying doing the most, I think what I'd love to do is get into the ring at WrestleMania with another one of my good friends who I, I've, I've loved spending the, like, time in the ring with and who I've traveled the world with now and I really enjoy. And his name is Finn Balor. I'd love to work Finn at WrestleMania just so that we could say that's something we got to do together. If you're talking about purely as like, what would you like to do? I think that would be the answer. But if you go story-wise, um, it seems to me like Sammy hasn't accomplished, truly accomplished what he was destined to do. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me like as good as it would be for him to beat Roman for that title, it'd be pretty great if he'd be the guy who stabbed him in the back a lot. Mm. But I don't know. Wow. That yeah. would be something. Would it be, a, would it be um, you know, like a mis- But you know, now that I'm saying it, it's not going to happen. happen. There's no chance Why? it's going to happen. Well, because now it's going to be out there. People, that's not happening. But hey, maybe, how maybe good would it be? this is reverse psychology. Yeah. Uh, it's not happening. <laughs> some, of the greatest, some of the greatest ever have never held that belt. Yeah. W- would it be devastating if he doesn't? No. No. I don't think so. No, because you look at this run, you know. You're yeah. like, you know, he could have won it in a heartbeat and everybody would, like, you know what I mean? Of course, for him, I, he'd probably feel differently, but I don't think so. I don't think you're defined by the titles you win and the titles you lose. If anything, this is something people uh, said about me, which I think is very flattering, is for a long, like, I didn't win, whatever. For, when I first came in WWE, I was a champion for a lot. And then at one point in 2017, I lost the U.S. title for the last time, and I didn't win a title until 2023, so that's like six years or whatever. But people were saying, yeah, but look, he's always been in top stories and top angles and top matches without any of those titles. That's truly when you don't need a title. And I remember reading, I would go, oh, that's actually really nice. It's mm-hmm. a great perspective to have. Because I n- didn't necessarily have that perspective. I was just, I guess sometimes I feel like, they're like, man, I haven't won a title in a while. Who cares? Who cares, really? They're toys. You know, like, it's just a prop. It really is. For If you look at the scope, well, of course, it's great to win a title and be recognized as a champion because it means the company's behind you and, and you're doing something right. But it doesn't mean you're not doing anything. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong if you don't have them. And uh, but it's like a, a, it's almost like a professional. Like it's just how come I'm not a champion? But then when you look at when somebody puts it that way, it's true. I've gone to like like again me and Steve. I don't know why I was in that spot. Right place, right time. Didn't need a title to do it. And uh, I don't think Sammy needs a title to, you know, to cement the fact that he's one of the best to ever do it. So. Last thing, uh, you said at the very beginning of all of this, you were just kind of saying it, but I, I don't know, it stuck with me throughout this conversation, and so I just wanted to ask, I don't know how much longer I'll do this for. Mm. Do you have an idea how much longer? Like, do, do you have a cap? Do you have a um, two-year plan, a three-year? No, I, so if you had asked me this six months ago, I think I would have said I could see myself wrestling for five or ten more years. But the last few months, that I think like that's changed. Not that I necessarily ever see my, I, I don't know, like I might still wrestling, might still wrestle for five, ten more years, but... I wonder if there's not a place for me somewhere else in an, another role as opposed to being in the ring. I definitely don't see myself away from the wrestling business anytime soon. But I get more, I don't know, man, I, I get such enjoyment out of doing commentary. I get so much enjoyment out of uh, helping other people with their stuff and seeing it work or trying to analyze why it didn't work and trying to figure out how to do it better. Um, and I could probably do both for a while, but I don't know. I don't know if... Uh, I know I have a year and a half left on my contract as a performer here for sure, but I don't know how I'm going to feel at the end of that, that contract. I, uh, I love wrestling. I love being in the ring. But again, part of it is also I've, the last two years have been so amazing. How am I going to top it? Well, I don't really have to top it, right, because I've been trying to not wonder what's next and not worry about what's next week. But at the same time, as much as I'm enjoying my time in the ring, I can physically see myself, or not physically, but like I feel it. Like I had a talk with, it, with Triple H about it last week. Like I'm get, I think I'm getting more out of helping other people than my own stuff. He's like, oh yeah, that happened to me. So I don't know. I, I have no idea. I say this now, and I might still be doing this in five years. I don't know. I really have no clue. Well, I hope so. And I have to say, we've been doing these uh, for two years now with uh, w- with the team here. This is one of my favorite ones, and Thanks. I was a little bit nervous going into it because I wasn't sure about everything. And mm. I know I've joked about this, but I really appreciate just how uh, open and thoughtful and uh, candid you have been. I even think I almost got you to almost cry there for a second. Did oh, you get no, emotional? Not even close. I, I saw a twinkle, just I a little. Just I thought. Wishful thing. I, I, I yeah. thought I thought I had you there, which I know would hey, be. Hey, I don't know. 
And don't get me wrong. I'm, an, I'm not going to, like, no, there's no bravado here. Sure. I'm a very emotional guy. Okay, I thought I saw But you didn't even get me close. Not even close. Not all right. even close. Well, all right. I shouldn't have brought that up because I would have just had the moral yeah. victory. Uh, thank uh, you so much for right. this. Really appreciate it. Thanks. There he is, the great Kevin Owens. Catch him every week right here. And a uh, big event coming up, obviously, in August as well, summer time. He's going to be on that one. I, 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 I don't know. I, well, I'm, Guess putting, what? I'm putting it I'm, out there. I'm not asking. Okay. Thank you we'll so see. much. Another edition of Ariel Hawani Meets in the books.